Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. My name is Tammy Sorrell. I'm the Director of Content and Programming at 90.5 WESA, where the uh, NPR station here in Pittsburgh, people familiar with us? Cool, cool. Um, my career has been in public media for 20 years, so there's going to be a lot of referencing to uh, public media, public radio, why, how, uh, the sound that uh, we have developed is working. So if you are a public radio listener, that will help a lot, but I will definitely stop and explain some things along the way. Okay. How produce content that doesn't suck? That's what this is called. Um, let's get into it. I just want to go over really quick what I'm going to be uh, explaining to you guys here, what we're learning here. We've got what elements does my podcast need to be successful programmatically? How to organize your content to produce the best sounding show to keep listeners listening? And what content directors are looking for and why getting your podcast sounding professional matters. What are we not learning here? Just so you uh, don't think I skipped something or blew over something. Uh, we're not going to talk about gear, we're not going to talk about website management design, audio hosting, RSS feeds, editing recording techniques, software, how to deal with Apple. I can do an entire presentation on how to deal with Apple. Um, how to build out, uh, audience outside of what your content is. There's some other great sessions happening here on how to use the power of blogging and social media to promote your podcast. Let those guys do what they do best. I'm uh, not going to be giving you a lot of legal advice. I got one point about lawyering up. Um, I'm also not going to talk about what podcasts I think suck and why I love squashing people. This is a great event. It's positive. It's meant to encourage folks. That's, that's not where I'm at. Um, okay, you might hear from folks that podcasts are so 2006, nobody does podcasts. Well, really, let's, let's look at a couple of facts. There is a great report um, that I encourage you guys to check out if you're a data nerd like myself. Uh, it's done by Edison Research. It's called The Infinite Dial. It's freely available um, online. You can just Google that and you'll get the report. So um, being the director of content programming for a media network, this information is really important to me to see how the audience landscape is changing. But it's also really important for you so you have a gauge of how many people out there are consuming podcasts right now. So the use of audio podcasting is higher than it has ever been. It's been a slow growth, as I'm sure you guys know. It's been a slow, it didn't just you know, pop out of nowhere and it's this huge big thing. It's been a little bit of a slow growth, but it is growing. Uh, an estimated 39 million Americans have listened to a podcast in the last month. 39 million Americans, that's a big audience. Uh, the other thing I think that is inter interesting is that one in five weekly podcast users are consuming six or more podcasts a week. So I really feel that these folks have moved away from what's on the radio kind of a thing to I'm getting the audio content that I want when I want it, and it's now how I consume the most content. Um, I, we have a subscription to you know, Apple TV, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Fire, all of that. I haven't watched a broadcast television program in probably a year and a half. All of my visual media consumption is now happening on demand. And I, I think that uh, the radio, audio, content producing industry should really pay attention to um, how that trend has transpired over television because, uh, as you'll see, it's happening as well through the audio content. Here is the slide that I talk about constantly at work, right? It's a major shift in podcast listening devices. So just in 2013, we had 34% of people uh, using a smartphone, a tablet, portable audio player. 2% didn't really know how they were getting their audio, uh, but 64% of people were listening to their audio on their computer, on their desktop, in a matter of a year. This is an incredible jump. 51%, now more than half of people are getting their audio content on a smartphone, a tablet, portable audio player. Uh, we too at WESA have seen our mobile audience grow by 30% in a year with no like promotions or anything like that. This is just how people are now consuming, you know, as you know, with the push for websites to be responsive design, people are getting their audio content on mobile as well, 51%. So there's an audience for this, and obviously if you're not tied to a desk, you can consume more, right? So you are working out, you're walking, you're driving, 
that sort of thing. So there's a growing audience for on-demand audio content. Uh, some people were saying, you know, no one's going to support podcasts even in 2012. Let's take a look at that. Uh, small podcast by Roman Mars, 99% invisible. I highly suggest checking it out. Let's see how he did in Kickstarter. Kickstarter. In 2012, his goal was $42,000. He raised $170,000, more than $170,000. That's more than 400% increase of what his goal was. These are people that are willing to pay for stuff they can get for free. So people, even two years ago, are looking for smart, intelligent podcasts, and they're willing to pay for it. Uh, some people, I don't know all these some people are, some people like to say that no one is going to support podcasts in 2014. Here's the big aha moment to, to everybody, right? Uh, anybody heard of Radiotopia coming from public, public radio exchange? Great. Radiotopia is a podcast network that was started a little while ago uh, by a bunch of independent producers and for PRX. I'll talk a little bit more about PRX in a bit. PRX is Public Radio Exchange. They are a distribution and content maker. So what recently just happened with Radiotopia, uh, their goal was $250,000. They made $620,000. People saying, Yes, I want to support podcasting. Yes, I want a network that I can go to and browse podcasts that I think that you think are great. Um, so there are people listening and there is money out here. People are willing to pay for quality podcasts. Uh, some other people saying people only like podcasts about sports and celebrities. And uh, if you do a podcast about sports or celebrities, that is great, that is fine. Um, sometimes you can get a little resistance from people saying, well, that's really fluffy, people aren't going to want that, sometimes people want fluff. But if you look at iTunes, the point I'm trying to make here, uh, this is from Monday at about 2.30, I took a snapshot of what was happening on iTunes. The nine, nine of the ten top podcasts are all public radio programs, not to the public radio horn, but there is a demand for high quality audio content. Um, we've got Serial, This American Life, Radio Lab, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, uh, Freakonomics Radio, TED Radio, our podcast, Moth Podcast, uh, Stuff you should, you should Know is the only one that is uh, not connected to um, public radio aside from Slate. We've got Fresh Air as well. So if you look at even number 10, I find this fascinating. The number 10 podcast on iTunes at that time was a podcast about a podcast. It's a podcast about Serial. So there's serious dedication and following to uh, content that's compelling and that people connect with. And uh, I'll talk about Serial some more in a little bit. Who's listening to Serial? Anybody in here? A little bit? Okay. Serial is a podcast produced by uh, some of the producers of This American Life. And it is, uh, no one has done this before. They are basically producing a certain amount of episodes investigating a murder case that had happened um, amongst some teenagers in 1999. And it's kind of like, it's been called the true detective for audio. It, it reveals itself, the story moves along one episode at a time. And you, you really have to, you can't start in the middle of true detective, you're not gonna know what's going on. Same thing with serial, you gotta start at the beginning to follow the story. Uh, and this podcast is one of the most podcasts ever, popular podcasts on iTunes, five million downloads in one episode. It's amazing. It's so amazing that other podcasts are, are talking about podcasts. We've got a podcast called Destination DIY. Uh, need something to listen to while you wait for the new serial episode. They're using that to give more content to people as they wait for the serial to come out. Uh, the AV Club does a podcast about serial called Serial Serial. And uh, probably the most navel gazy of all is public radio is NPR. What happens when you make a podcast about podcasts about podcast? So they have a podcast called NPR Pop Culture Happy Hour. It's great. Um, really, that's what it is. It's about popular culture happening right now across all mediums. They did a podcast talking about podcasts like Serial, 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 and the Slate podcast, which are talking about the Serial podcast. So um, this Serial podcast is a phenomenon I really encourage you guys to take a listen to. Um, there's an organization that public radio program directors usually belong to. It's called the Public Radio Program Directors Organization. And 
they have come up with some core values of programming. So there's three different sections, and I'll break those down a little further for you as well. Qualities of the mind and intellect. There's qualities of the heart and spirit. Qualities of the craft and excellence in the use of the media. Let's talk a little bit about what the qualities of the mind and intellect are. This is what listeners want. This is what makes strong content. Uh, programming that reflect, reflects a lifelong love of learning, desire to learn something new every day. It's substance. It's a connection to the world. Curiosity. The need to deep. The need to dig deeper. To ask why, not just what. Credibility, accuracy, honesty, respect for the intelligence of the listener, and a purpose. Clear understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. Qualities of the heart and spirit. Humor always has a purpose. It is never mean-spirited. Idealism. We believe in our power to find solutions. Uh, we produce content that is inspired about public life and culture. Civility, a belief in civil discourse. Not producing content that's yelling and stepping all over people. Uh, generosity, content has the center stage and the subject or the guest is the star. It's not about the host. Qualities of craft, excellence in the use of our medium. Uh, it's a uniquely human voice that is in the podcast. It's conversational, it's authentic, it's intimate. Uh, pacing, pacing of the podcast is deliberate, thoughtful, appropriate to the substance of the content, right? You're not rushing through a big legal explanation or you're not dragging out a simple description of something. And uh, attention to detail, I think this is what public radio uh, and public media has really been uh, come to the cornerstone of the content. It's the music, it's the sound elements, the language, the pacing. So, the qualities conclusion, uh, what PRPD has come up with is that successful programs can mix those qualities in a variety of ways, but all three categories must be present. It's the fusion of these three sets of core values that creates public radio's signature sound and the fundamental appeal of our programming to core listeners. So in, in my mind, just so I can keep things sorted, uh, what types of podcasts have we got? We got storytelling podcasts. Right, like Moth, It's American Life, Serial, uh, How To Podcasts. There's a ton of How To Podcasts out there. Uh, chats, or reviews, and interviews. So one thing I think that everybody really needs to think about is why are you doing your podcast anyway? Why are you devoting time and energy and everything to this podcast? I really believe that you need a mission statement. You need to be able to explain why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and everything that you do programmatically should reflect that statement. This gives you a point of focus so your show can develop a strong brand so you're not wandering all over the place and I'll get a little more to consistency in a little bit. So this is the primary frame, this is very formal. The mission of your podcast name is to what your purpose is by providing your primary function or activities to your stakeholders. Who are you serving? Who is your audience? And you can also add an additional clarifying statement. These can be rearranged, but they all should be there. Let's do a, a quick example. Um, fake podcast that I just make up called Creative Foam. The mission of Creative Foam is to inform, entertain, and strengthen the coffee lovers tribe by providing discussion, critiques, and trends of cappuccino designs to baristas and cappuccino enthusiasts. Right, so I said what my name is, what the purpose is, what my, the function of the podcast is and who I'm trying to serve, right? It creates a really strong focus. Uh, this is something that you don't, you know, have to put on your website, but it, it's, it's your internal measuring stick and you need, you absolutely need to be able to recite a conversational version of it. So write it out, practice it, be able to say it. Now, a lot of people are, well, even people that are like, well, I really have to do that. I know what it's about. But um, here's where this is going to come in handy. So there's a series called Startup. Um, it's produced by Alex Bloomberg uh, and another producer. Alex Bloomberg is of uh, Marketplace and Planet Money, some really popular um, public radio podcasts. Um, so here's where I'm going to switch to the map, and I'm going to play you a little clip here. I'm Alex Bloomberg, and you're listening to Startup, a podcast mini-series documenting the launching of my podcast company. Now, I'm 
It's the business origin story you never actually hear. Set down before the facts can fade into this is the garage where it all started mythology. The most honest and transparent account I can make. That's something that happens every day in this country. We have they receive firsthand. Starting a business. If you're listening to episode two. If you didn't hear episode one, you can start at the beginning. Oh, let's do that one first. Just to recap, previously in episode one, I went out to pitch my business idea, a network of podcasts focusing on narrative journalism and storytelling, to Silicon Valley investor Kingpin Chris Saka. The pitch did not go well. You gotta tighten up your story. So the, we'll start again. Yeah. yeah. You now kind of All right. Your, if I were calling an Uber right now and it said it's gonna be here in two minutes. And that was all the time you had. Uh, what are you doing? So I'm making a network of digital podcasts uh, that we will monitor, that, that will, that will, that is going to be, <laughs> sorry. Chris, not surprisingly, did not say yes. But he did not say no either. He said, go back home, hone your pitch. The next time you're out in California, you can pitch my partner, Matt Mazio. If you can convince him, said Chris, I can see us investing. So a quick story, you know, so I don't know how many of you are out in Silicon Valley or anything like, but like that, but it's a it's a good example, right? So if you're happen to meet up with a content producer um, at another uh, pod camp or at a different podcast thing, you need to be able to say strongly and quickly what your podcast is about. So even in that short clip, why does the startup content work right there? So let's look at a couple of the PRP qualities. Uh, the qualities of the mind, he's talking about the facts and experiences that people can learn from, but he doesn't insult the listener's intelligence. He doesn't say, this is what a startup is. Everybody knows what a startup is. Um, qualities of the heart, you know, he is hopeful, he has idealism. There's some humor in there, it's frustration, and is he going to make it, right? That's what makes, there's the tension in the story of is he going to make it, and those are emotions that we can all connect with. Uh, qualities of the craft, it's authentic. And the music propels the story, doesn't compete with it. He's got tight edits, consistent volume, the audio quality is good. Okay. Um, so, okay, you got that. Now what? Uh, think about what your format or genre that you want to be. And maybe you guys are already producing co podcasts, so kind of think about what you're doing in there. There's interviews, reviews, how to tips, stories. Storytelling and journalism like storytelling is uh, probably the most time consuming. I won't say that it's the most difficult but it is definitely the most time-consuming. Uh, is it uh, serious, hilarious, newsy, chatty? Uh, some other questions I get is, how long should it be? How frequently do I need to do one? How many people should I have on? Let's answer those questions. How long should it be? Can I mix it up? Here's some examples. There's the How to Do Everything podcast produced by the producers of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. It's about five minutes. TED, TED lectures are always no longer than 20 minutes. 20 minutes is about the length, the average length of a human attention span. You can get someone to listen for 20 minutes, uh, and then they're going to decide whether or not they're going to tune out or not. That goes for television shows, you know, as well. That's why uh, most sitcoms and half-hour programs are 20 minutes of content, 10 minutes of commercials. Um, the NPR Pop Culture Happy Hour, uh, they're small batch where they take down a, just a, a small segment that's eight minutes, and serial is going anywhere between 40 to 60 minutes. So. Does it have to be the exact same length every time? No. But if you are going out and your brand is, I'm producing a 10 minute podcast on you know, green natural cleaning experiences in your house, you better make sure that it's around 10 to 20 minutes. If you come out one week and it's 10 minutes, and the next week it's 50, and the next week it's three, uh, I'll talk a little more about this, but it's people don't really know what to expect. How frequently do you need to do one? Uh, daily, you're probably independently wealthy. Uh, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. I think weekly is the best. Um, bi-weekly can happen too, but now you're starting to get off people's radar a little bit because it's every other week and people have to remember was it this week or was it next week. Uh, monthly, monthly can work, but that again is a, is a challenge because you're not in front of your listeners on a continuous regular basis. How many hosts or guests should I have? Uh, no more than two hosts and three guests on it once. And you better have a really good reason for that many guests, like really good, right? Because if you have two hosts and three guests, that's five voices that your listener has to keep straight, has to keep track of. 
Um, you know, and especially if you have something that's all men or something that's all women, that's going to be really hard for a listener to peg who is whom and, and which person do I need to you know pay attention to. Um, two guests, it's great. Three guests and one host can work. You probably want to stay no more than around in the four area, um, unless you have a really good reason for having uh, that many people on. Um, so title. What should I call my podcast? Um, I come across this a lot with folks. I call it the curse of the clever lover. Sometimes people are trying to be so clever that it kind of blows what they're trying to do. So uh, I just picked some random podcasts off um, online. One called, uh, I guess I'm podcasting. I guess, I guess you are, you know? Um, doesn't really tell me a lot of what it's about. Um, what are the topics that are talking about? I don't know why I would be, why would I be interested in that? Um, we've got the Monkey Bicycle Podcast. Kind of a quirky name, and I'm like, piece my interest a little bit. Um, but I, I maybe also wouldn't use a broadcast tower as your logo for a podcast. Uh, one of the other ones I saw, show me your titles. So probably giving the film strip look to it, probably about films. Not really sure though, what are they talking about? Um, so going along with coming up with a smart, shareable title, you need some visual branding in there. Um, these are all examples of uh, smart titles, and they have pretty good logos that go with it. Water Cooler Journal TV Podcast. Pretty much know what it's about, right? You come in in the morning, you're talking with your coworkers about you know what happened on Walking Dead last night. That tells me what it's about very quickly. Uh, PR conversations in public relations. There are people. That's a great audience. Eleven o'clock comics. This uh, not really sure exactly what it's about, but it looks. It's clean, it's smart, it's hip, it's a little futuristic looking. I would imagine that um, this is a really interesting podcast based on that logo. It piques my interest. We've got Potter and Daughter podcast. Uh, probably a father and a daughter talking about a Harry Potter books. It's really cute, but if you're, these guys are creeping in on some copyright. So they may have some problems down the road. They might have to change the name of it, change the logo, and that whole thing. So um, you want to be really careful how close you get to another copyright. Living in Las Vegas, podcast and blog. Maybe not super clever or quirky, but I know exactly what that's going to be about. Uh, another one I thought was really good, Doug loves movies. You know, Doug loves movies. That's easily to, uh, it's easy to recreate. It's very clean, it's very simple. Tells me what, what it's about. Um, also just a, a small quick note on episode titles. I see this a lot. Um, so I really recommend using actual words to title your episodes, not just EP 101 or Show 101 or Episode 101. Uh, it's, it's boring, right? And it also, uh, if, it's, if it's something other than just EP 101, you've got words in there that help people find your content. And it's another element to brand in your particular style. Uh, people remember Friends in here? Uh, they did a whole season where it was the one with that guy that Phoebe loved. The one that Rachel turned away. They did a whole sort of season about uh, you know, how people talk, right? Did you see that one last night where Rachel ran off with that other guy? It's clever, but you know what it's about. Um, here's just a couple examples I came up with for uh, my Creative Phone podcast. You can put numbers in there. You certainly can. You definitely want to let your listeners know where they're, where they're at and what you're creating. So 101, haven't got time for the phone. Episode 201, Why O'Leary's Cappuccino Machine Rocks Our World. Show 42, Your Cappuccino Foam Design Questions Answered. Or just number 12, Cappuccino Mugs, Nick Smith Designs, Beans, Beans, Beans. So it's playing off whatever your brand is. It's a little creative and fun, but it also gives the listener some information on what they're going to be getting. Uh, music, quick note about music. I've had to help people with this before. I strongly recommend using non-copyrighted music from the get-go. Otherwise, be prepared to lawyer up, very expensive, or change your tune when you don't want to. Now, a little side note, if you're doing a podcast for fun, you know, with your friends, you're not really trying to shop it around or make a living off it or things like that, and you don't really mind if somehow some music lawyer contacts you and says, hey, you can't use that music, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but if you're really trying to start this out as a business, uh, as a way to make a living, um, as a way to be as professional as possible. Um, I definitely recommend not using your favorite song in your podcast as your branding, okay? 
A really great place for Creative Commons Free Music is freemusicarchive.org. Um, there's a lot of electronica on there. You're going to have to dig around a little bit, but you will find stuff that will work for your podcast on freemusicarchive.org. Uh, this American Life works really closely with somebody on freemusic.org. Um, so there, there is music there. If you want some sound effects, you want like a gong smash, or you want you know a door opening or something like that, I recommend freesound.org for sound effects. Thousands and thousands and thousands of every possible sound recording you could ever imagine. Uh, Freesound, same thing, works under Creative Commons um, requirements there too. So signature segments. What are signature segments? Okay, signature segments. Signature segments are easily recreated regular segments or segments that follow a recipe, okay? It's the same thing. It's easily recreated. You do it maybe every week or every other week, something like that, that when people know it, they know exactly who it is, what your podcast is. So let's go through a couple here. Uh, we've got a show, Marketplace, about business, and uh, each day. But first, let's do the numbers. Now the throws up so the host every day, uh, if the numbers are up, they play Where Are the Money? Um, if the numbers are down, uh, they play a different song, and it's the same every time, right? So you know when that song comes on and Kai says, let's do the numbers, you know you're going to get what's happened on the stock market that day. This American Life, uh, if you listen to that, you'll catch this at the end of every episode. Education.com. The BBC Management represent for our show by our boss, Mr. Corey Malatia, whose turtle breeding experiments are finally paying off. I dare you guys to come feel these turtles. It sounds like a weird, a weird thing that we really have the softest turtles in town. You should feel one. They're really soft. I'm Robert Glass. Back next week with more stories of this American money. <laughs> so every week. They um, take a sound bite that happened in the show and they take it totally out of context and they, they reference Tori Melteo, who is the show's co-creator. Um, that happens every week. People look forward to it, they know it, they know when they hear that that's this American life. One more example. Michelle Lance, <laughs> thanks for the small talk. Thank you so much. And now time for cocktails. <laughs> Um, once again, we tell you something that happened this week in history, then have a bartender capture its essence in cocktail form. It's like history is a submarine submerged in an ocean of booze. With the 11 twist periscope. Refreshing. First, the history part, right around this time back in 1945, a device was invented. So that is a podcast called Dinner Party Download. Um, it's probably one of the success stories. Uh, two guys from Marketplace, the previous program, were hanging out talking after work a lot, and they said, you know, hey, we like the same things. Let's check this out. Let's do a podcast. So they started doing a podcast, and it eventually got picked up by the company that distributes Marketplace, and uh, now it's on a couple hundred stations across the country as the dinner party download. Um, their signature segment, coming out of Small Talk, how they open the show, they do an interview with someone, then they go into Time for Cocktails. It's, so their whole show, if you listen to Marketplace, it's a whole show of signature segments. Um, you don't need a whole show of signature segments, but I really recommend coming up with at least one that really brands you. So what do you do once the mic is on? We're not there yet, turn it off, okay? We've got, you've got your mission, you've got your format, your branding, you've got sign signature segments, what else do you need? Right? We're going to talk a little bit quick about uh, clocks versus notes versus rundowns and script. So there's a couple ways that you can organize um, your, your episode each time that you do it. A lot of people just go on and wing it. And like I said, if that's what you love to do and you're having fun doing it and you've got people listening to your podcast, that's great. That's it's not a problem. But here's, I'm giving you some tips on how to get better faster. Um, so show clocks, I could talk about this forever. I'm sure it's pretty nerdy. Um, every program on public radio has what's called a show clock. You can see it's so stations all across the country, 400 stations air morning edition, and we need to know how long every single segment is going to be so we can jump in and out with our local hosts. That's probably too much for you. So you don't really need to go that far. 
So how about some notes, right? Create a phone, uh, I'm gonna do my intro, and then I'm gonna talk about some new machines, I'm gonna take social media questions, I'm gonna interview that guy Bob, uh, then we're gonna talk about a new contest that we're having. Well, it's, it's better than nothing, but you don't know how long those segments are, you don't know how long to go, you're gonna set yourself up for ages and ages of editing here, okay? What I recommend is a rundown. A rundown will probably work for you. This is probably a little too much, but it's a, a good example. This is from our daily show, Central Pittsburgh. Um, and they have uh, certain breaks that they have to hit so we can play local underwriting, things like that on broadcast. But what's great about this is that you can map out how long your segments are. You have a record. You know, you know exactly what you were doing and who was on, how long it's going to go for. They keep a record of what music that they used. Um, so it's all there to reference back. Uh, do you need a script? I get this question a lot. People don't like writing scripts. They think it sounds forced or canned. They want it to be just off the cuff. And if that is part of your mission, then that's great. But if it's not, I, I really do recommend that you need a script for at least your intros, your outros, and other transitions to different segments, okay? Why? Why do you need this? You'll sound more professional and confident. It'll cut down on retakes. It saves time. It'll cut down on your editing time. That saves time. It'll keep your flow steady. And you'll have searchable records. That's also what's really great about a rundown. So, you know, when, did I have that guy on before? Did I talk about that a month ago? You'll be able to go in and be able to know exactly who you've had on in the past. So uh, scripts are really important for that. Rundowns are really important for that. So I get to do that. You know, holy crap, that is a lot of work. Um, it's a mission, format, style, branding, signature segments, clock, notes, rundown, script. So you might be saying, well, Tam, what does doing all of that work get me? What does it get me? So you're going to know what you're doing. Planning saves time. You'll get better faster. I promise you this. You will get better faster having all of this mapped out. And you'll also be able to speak the language that the industry speaks. So you'll sound and act professional. When you call me up and say, hey, I'm really having a hard time writing this intro, or how can I do this transition from this segment to this segment, or I'm taking social media questions on this, and it's been 10 minutes, and is that too long, too short? You'll be able to speak the language that industry professionals speak, okay? Like I just said, you've got records that I talked with Pittsburgh Dad last year. Can't remember, you can look it up, okay? And it'll also keep you focused. Here is the secret sauce that people in charge of content are looking for. If you come away with one thing out of my session here today, this is it. Consistency, 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 right? Why does your show, why does your podcast need to be consistent? Consistent is not boring, okay? Consistent is because people like the same things over and over. They do, right? You drive the same way to work. You have that same turkey sandwich for lunch. You come home right away, you put your comfy clothes on, and you settle in to watch some Netflix. People do the same things over and over. So don't F with people, right? They need to know what they're getting when they're investing their time. Think about how many different things are competing for your listener's time. I mean, I could stand up here for an hour and not even list everything, not talking just about media, but everything else in their life. They need to know that if they invest the time, they're going to get what they expect to get within a certain framework, okay? People expect the show to be the same each episode. It's a great way to build your brand. They will know what they're getting. It shows professionalism. And it's a solid base to build and experiment on. If you know what you're doing and you do that really well, you can take it up a notch and do some experimenting. Maybe you want to try having phone calls on your show or things like that, or going out and doing man on the street things, okay? Um, it also forces you to perfect your craft. It forces you to get good. So uh, my only sort of snobby thing that I want to say today is please don't let people think podcasting is where all the people who couldn't make it in broadcasting hang out. Podcasting is an amazing medium, and people, it's, it's the best thing because it's so, anybody can do it. You don't need a studio, you don't need a truckload of equipment, you don't need to hire actors and professionals. Anybody can do it, and that's what is amazing about it. But if you're serious about it, be serious about it. Respect the medium, grow the medium. Uh, I get this a lot too, I really like living in a house and eating. How am I gonna be able to do all of this? There's, there's no way. There is a way, right? Okay? Uh, be realistic and creative about your resources and time. Find other people who love what you love. 
and hook up with them and talk about things and get somebody else to help contribute. Bloggers, bloggers are a great resource for podcasts. Uh, you might want to consider having more than one host, sharing the duties, splitting it up a little bit. Um, you can this, hook up with other podcasters. I don't know if that's happening here, but uh, meet other podcasters, meet other people that are doing what you are doing. Um, you can learn from each other. That's why this PodCamp is amazing. It is great. I completely support this. I think this is wonderful. Uh, get yourself on a schedule, a routine. You know, you work 9 to 5, takes you an hour to run some errands, get home. You know, 6 o'clock, you're doing some dinner, maybe you're playing with your kids, talking to your spouse, calling your mom. Okay, that stuff's over by 7 30, 8 o'clock. Even if you go to bed at 10 o'clock, you've got two hours, five days a week, 10 hours a week. If you stop watching TV <laughs> and work on your podcast, you've got 10 hours just straight. That's not even counting weekends. You, you can do a great professional podcast in 10 hours. Um, I have a lot of hookup references. <laughs> what if you want to hook up with public radio people? So PDs, program directors like myself, they should be open to talking to people. And if they're not, you don't want to deal with them. They should be open to looking for new sources of content and programming. We never know where it's going to come from. The people that I played for you, the startup and this American Life and Serial and all of them, they didn't just start that way. You know, they've been working at this for years and years and years. And the reason they are where they are is because somebody took five minutes to talk to this person about what they love and what they're doing. Um, again, that's why I'm really stressing to perfect that elevator pitch, that mission statement. You may only have 30 seconds with somebody in an elevator. You know, you need to show them why they should invest time in you, okay? I can't stress this enough. Make it easy to sample your work. Don't send people, and I'm, I don't think you guys will, but I get, don't send people CDs. My computer does not even have a CD player. Uh, don't send people, you know, jump drives, flash drives of your content. Make it easy. Put it on SoundCloud. Have it easily findable on your website. If you call me and say, hey, check this out, you know, I think I've got something here. I, I can't dig through mounds of stuff to get to your stuff. You need to be able to get to it right away. Um, you know, if you want to work with a program director, anybody in content, really, you know, stand up for your show. Be proud of what, of what you do and what you've created, but definitely accept Constructive criticism, gratefully, uh, gracefully. Uh, you're not going to be paid out of the gate. It's public radio, uh, so so don't ask. You know, I, and that's a tough that's a tough thing. I see there's another session uh, for bloggers why you should get paid. I think you guys should be paid. You know, you're working your ass off. Um, unfortunately, right now uh, for commercial, there's just not a return on investment unless you're getting millions and millions of downloads. But the way to get there is to do the work now and to get there and to get a public radio person interested in what you're doing. Um, it's best to start local. I don't know how many people are from other cities here, but it's best to start with your local public radio station. Uh, local is our mandate. It's in our, our mission. It's in the FCC requirements for us to have a license. It's to work with the community and support the community that is here in our broadcast area. Uh, don't bother people for the first three, six months that you start off, you know, don't come to us and say, you know, hey, this is the best show ever, you should put it on. Uh, you're going to need a little bit of work. Everybody needs a little work. If you want feedback, that's, that's great. So definitely uh, get in touch with people that are going to be able to give you some feedback. So what can all this rigmarole of public broadcasting, public media do for you? Uh, at best, you know, it turns into a broadcaster and distributed show, right? Uh, or you can be added to a network of podcasts. Check out WBEZ.org. They have probably 10, 11, I think the last time I checked, podcasts, um, stuff that's not on the air. It's, it's uh, Love and Radio. They have a, a craft beer podcast on there. They have uh, fiction review, all sorts of different things on there. And all of these podcasts are under the WBEZ brand. That's great. You're kind of piggybacking on a brand that's already established and out there. Uh, at Medium, Working with public media, you can be part of a station podcast lab. It's part of the reason I'm here. I'm hoping to be able to grow that um, a little more at WESA. Uh, maybe they'll take a segment, you know. Can't do your whole podcast, but I really like that part where you're interviewing regular people on the street. We want to use that in our show. Um, or we could offer you other work, you know. Topic matter might, might not work for our audience, but we like the way that you're doing things. We can tell you're professional. We like your style. Would you go out and do a report on X, okay? Uh, at worst, you get a free professional critique, and you've got contact in the business. What else? Anything else? Anything else I should do? Uh, 
Uh, I strongly recommend, beg, borrow, steal, get yourself to the Third Coast International Audio Festival. Anybody heard of that in here? Uh, it happens every other year in Chicago. Uh, they just had one, so the next one is in 2016. Look them up online. It is the best conference um, that you can go to where they put big, the professional producers all the way down to someone that has never even picked up a microphone. And they do amazing sessions on everything, on gear, on producing, on distributing. All of the major distributors are there. You can, they have a pitch session. You can pitch to major distributors about what your podcast is. And uh, we just sent our morning guy, Josh Rollins, in there, and you know he's, he's blown away. I used to live in Chicago and work for BEZ, so I went to this every time. It's the greatest. It will fill you, fill you up with the most love for what you're doing, and you will connect with people at all different levels. It, it Honestly, it is worth your time and money to go to Third Coast. Strongly recommend it. Uh, Transom, transom.org. Transom is a, a website um, uh, created by public radio, public media people, and it also is a really wonderful resource uh, for someone who like literally doesn't know what gear to buy or what software to use to edit or how to construct a story, that sort of thing, all the way, all the way up. It's great, it has interview techniques, it has everything on there, all the secrets are there on Transom, so check those guys out as well. Uh, PRX, I talked about a little bit earlier, Public Radio Exchange. Check out PRX.org, right? So they're a distributor. They distribute shows as big as This American Life down to just independent freelance producers. And basically what I do as a content uh, manager, I'm looking for some segments, I'm looking for some content to fill a holiday. I can go on PRX.org and I can shop around, right? I can put in topics, I can put in titles, I can put in themes. And I can look at all the different content that people have uploaded to there that's available for me to broadcast. It's not necessarily for entire podcasts, um, but I would look around there and kind of see, you can see who's downloading it, you can see who's airing it, you can see comments on it. Um, it'll, it'll give you a little bit of feel of what people are looking for and what's kind of resonating with people. Um, check out the How Sound podcast. How Sound is produced by Transcend and PRX. Uh, again, it's a podcast about how to make a podcast. And it's not, um, they do some basic things, but they get in a little bit deeper. It's a great way to kind of, if you're stuck, you know, it's a great way to kind of open up your thinking. Um, as I mentioned earlier, go to radiotopia.fm and see a glimpse of the future. This is it, folks. This is going to be the next major shift in audio content. Definitely get your non-family, non-partner ears on your content. That's why these events are great. Meet the people here. I totally support that. I think that's the best thing here is to develop a group of people you can get together with once a week, once a month, you know, and say, hey, will you listen to this? What do you think? We, we do that with stories at our station. We do that with stories that we didn't even produce. You listen to them, pick them apart. What could be better? That was great. It gives you ideas. It gives you inspiration. It makes you feel like you're not alone. You know, this can be a really lonely thing. So these type of events, and forming small groups um, where you're bouncing ideas off of each other can, can help you keep inspired and still go. Listen to other podcasts. I think this is really important. Sometimes people get so tunneled into what they're doing um, that they sort of forget to check out what's out there. Listen to other podcasts. What are people doing? What do you like? What do you don't like? Mm, that didn't work. This is a huge part of my job. I listen to content all day long. Um, so it gives you ideas. It helps you connect. It helps you a lot of times also feel good about what you're doing, right? Just pick a random podcast, you know? You might think you don't know that much. I really like what they said earlier. You do, you do know things. So check out other podcasts from people who this is their craft and profession and career all the way down to someone that's just starting. Uh, so what am I listening to? Got about 10 minutes here. We might go back to that sound clip. Um, as you guys might have guessed, I am obsessed with cereal. Uh, it is really, it is amazing. It is an investment. You can't really listen to it and do work. I tried to do that a couple times. Uh, it's very detailed. It's very moving. Um, it's, it's, it is a great. I, if we have time, I'll play you a clip here at the end. Um, I'm also listening to Radio Lab on the media, Dinner Party Download. Those are little asterisks by that, because those are public radio programs. But they're public radio programs we, we broadcast that I don't have time to listen to when they're on. It doesn't fit with my life. You know, I take that cue as, as a program manager. You know, this program is not on the air when I want to listen to it. If people listen to it podcast, that's great. Works for me. Uh, the NPR Pop Culture Happy Hour, this is a great example of a chat show, right? A couple of people sitting around a table, talk about things. Um, 
A lot of problems people have with that genre is that people go on too long. There's no structure. It gets too insidery. It's too much about the people that are doing the podcast. Um, so check out Pop Culture Happy Hour, and you'll get, you'll get some good tips of how to tighten it up. 99% Invisible, that I mentioned earlier, is about art and design, how there's, there's little things in our life that we miss. Uh, Roman does a great job of taking a kind of a niche, you know, for, like art and design, that doesn't sound interesting. He, he takes that and broadens it out and makes it appealing to a wide audience. Check that out. Uh, I've also just started listening to podcasts about cereal, so um, you might want to check those out too. I think that's interesting. It's talking a lot about the change in this media, you know. Um, so I've got like three final things, advice, wisdom for you. Uh, we're at about 10 to 11. The serial clip is about five minutes. So let me get to these last points and then if you guys want, I'll play a clip for it or I'm sure you guys can catch it on iTunes as well. So the three things I want to leave you at. You know, don't start out crushing your own dream. There's going to be plenty of people that will do that for you. There is. Be proud of what you do. Be inspired by what you do. Uh, don't. Number three, don't give up. Number two, help each other. That is what is so great about this time in audio content. Podcasting is such a collaborative medium. I have never met people who podcast who say, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. I don't need your advice. It is, it's like this super grassroots, even way up to the professionals. Um, people are always willing to talk to people about what they're doing and how they're doing it. And uh, help each other. Don't give up. Okay? Success? It's not a straight line. You guys know that. So podcasting. Can I get a hell yeah? yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, if you guys want to get a hold of me, I'm at WESA Tammy on Twitter, uh, Tammy Turwell at gmail.com, uh, where I work, T Turwell at WESA.FM. Uh, I gotta give a shout out to Drew Bodker who did the audio for me. And uh, thank you. I'll go make something. Thanks. Does anybody have any questions? Since we got all the time. Yeah, you can always tweet me, email me. I'm definitely, uh, I, you know, I want to talk to people. I want to know, I want to hear about what you're doing. So give me a shout. Thanks. Sure, sure. Is it possible to get a presentation? Yeah, I think, are you guys putting them all online? They're recorded, they'll be on YouTube later. Yeah. Like you want the slides? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just give me your info and I can I'll email it to you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And thanks to the podcast people. This is amazing. And I'm so uh, I've only been in Pittsburgh for about three years, come from Chicago. Uh, and I'm really inspired to see folks, you know, getting into it and doing exactly why this is so great. Helping each other, giving everybody opportunities to learn and grow and meet each other. It's the best thing possible. So thank you very much. You played my favorite clip from Startup. Really? That two minute, yeah. he's like, I have Uber coming in two minutes, you have a pitch, go. Yeah. That was my favorite thing, and I was like, that made me restructure my business plan. So I was like, Good. no. Yeah, I mean, it's so, um, that's why I chose that one. It fits so much here. You know, you know, what I was trying to get across with, you know, the canned mission statement and that sort of thing. But like I said, you know, there's a time you might be standing next to somebody that's yeah. got. 30 seconds, you're in literally an elevator pitch, waiting for Uber. If anybody be, starting a small business needs to listen to that podcast, because yeah, he is absolutely. so inspiring that he stumbles over himself, he falls over a few times, and then he picks himself right back up again. I mean, and he's a professional. Yes. Right? I mean, that guy works with Marketplace and This American Life, and, you know, there was a major producer. So. Yeah, and there was one episode where he had to go pitch it. I think it was the next episode after that. He had to pitch it to one of the, like, biggest yeah. um Broadcasting people in the like United States of America, he was nervous. Yeah. As well. yeah. he was like, I mean, that's that's the thing. Like people who are in my job, like I get that all day long, and I don't get it just from podcast people. I get it from the distributors. I get it from the people who make this American Life. You know what I mean? And the people who make Radio Lab and make on the media and make Morning Edition. You know what I mean? They want access to my airwaves right now. Yeah, it's moving away from that, as I keep telling my colleagues, but. Right now, I have, a, I have a tower, I have a transmitter, 25,000 watt transmitter in an audience. So I get pitched stuff constantly. So that's why I think that, like I tell my staff, 
our local broadcast, our local news has to be as good as national because people don't give you a break because you're local. They're not going to say, oh, well, that interview was kind of crappy, but that's okay because it's just as nice part. No, you know, it has to be as good. So your pitch about your podcast has to be as good as somebody who has made a career in pitching people programming. So I hope I was able to help you guys a little bit there. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.